We're here at Adventure Oshkosh and we've come inside the buildings to look at a product that everybody needs but no one knows enough about. That's the battery that starts their engine and in some cases, as we'll find out, also runs your instruments in the event of some kind of problem. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm going to talk with Kathy Nickerson today and she Hi. is from EarthX Batteries and you're going to tell us a little bit about batteries in general, but let's start with your special relationship you have with Rotax in the sense that they have given your product, if not by name, at least not at least by description, uh, their seal of approval, if you will. Tell me a little bit about that, Kathy. So on May 29th of 2015, they put out a mandatory service bulletin that said, unless you had the protection that actually is listed, all those all items of, on that list right there, verbatim, in your lithium battery, they do not approve it or endorse it to be used with their Rotex engines. So, in essence, they said they could use the Rotex battery. So, sure, we understand. They're yeah. probably not going to call you out by name. Because that would have been great, though. Somebody somewhere <laughs> may have similar or the right ingredients. I don't know that, but uh, we'll take it. I'm going to read that list because I don't know if they show on the camera very well. So it talks about integrated battery management system to protect the cells from these items. Overcharge, over discharge, short circuit, excessive crank temperature protection, cell charge level balancing, and undoubtedly more stuff of interest. So which battery here are we looking at? And, and I want you to go ahead and grab it and pick it up and let's look at it here. And this, this one here is our most popular one. It is designed for a 60 amp alternator for smaller planes. Okay. It like weighs, a light sport aircraft. Yes. Yep. We do mainly light sport aircraft, light kits and yep. so forth. And all the lights this are. is 3.9 pound. You can see how light that really is. And when she handed me this in the first place, I wondered if it was just a box. I mean, it's literally that light. Uh, you know, three pounds, four pounds, you can go pick something up in your house that's that light and you'll know, but it is not very heavy. I can wave this thing around easily. Try that with your lead acid battery. <laughs> so tell me what this is going to do for me as far as cranking the engine up. Our uh, favorite cameraman here uh, comes from way north and he says, well, what about in really cold conditions? This going to do, do, do the job for a 912 that has fairly high compression? So define really cold for you. Are we talking colder than negative 30 degrees Celsius? Well, I would hope not, but let's go down to at least zero. Okay, so at zero degrees, this battery here, it actually puts out um, 320 cranking amps. So the battery that we're replacing has 107. So we have quite a bit more cold cranking. On a warm day like today, it actually put out 680 cranking amps. Now, I suppose if somebody said, well, you know, I come a really cold place, and you got a bigger battery for them that could do the job? We do. And would Rotax approve that one as yep. well? Every single one of our batteries. Okay, so have all it's these not features. that they're focused on this particular nope. one, but all your of type it. of battery that does what it does. Right. And you can tell me how it does that in a minute. But what sure. other batteries do you have? There? So For this somebody one, that says, I've got to have more than that, I just know I do. Yeah, we do. So this one has 680 cranking amps. 680, all right. This one has 840. Wow, okay. This one has 1,200. <laughs> I would seem to be doing the job. Now that's that's much heavier than the other one. What weight is this? So that one's seven point seven pounds, but that is double the battery. But not quite double the weight. But it's Correct. it's still not too bad. I mean I'm not throwing that one around quite as easily as the other one. But that's a lot of battery in a small space, all self contained. And tell me about all this stuff at the top that you told me before and the reason for this little dangly wire on it. Sure, so these three, three models were specifically designed for the aircraft market that we are debuting here at Oshkosh. The first time anybody's seen them? Yes. Okay, So cool. how they are different than our other models no. is we are going through the certification process to get these certified. Okay. So the FAA gives you a list of all the requirements you must meet. So part of that is you must have a redundant circuit board built in, okay. which these do. The other thing it has is right here is a battery fault light I indicator. I see the little light indicator right yes. up here in the front. Um, it also has, you can connect that to your control panel or through your EPUS. Because you're probably not going to see this. Correct. So you want to have a light inside the cockpit exactly. so you know what's going on. Exactly. Okay. So that is exactly what these bring in addition to what our other batteries have. Um, so you said on the top here, underneath this uh, little uh, bulge on the top of the battery, that's where the, the management system of this is. 
Tell right. me a little bit more about that and what it does for you. So it does, it does a lot of things. So a lithium battery does need to protect from voltage. So if you over discharge... All those things we read earlier yes, yes, happening up to, here. Okay. Correct. So if you over discharge your battery, which sometimes happens, you leave your master switch on. I've never done that. I, no one ever some does people. that, but some of those people... Okay, maybe once. Well, yeah. So if you did that and you came back three days later, this battery is going to put itself to sleep. Beautiful. So when you put a voltmeter across the terminal, it's going to read zero volts. It is not over discharge. It actually has that battery management system opened up so you can no longer drain the battery to avoid that damage. So what am I going to do if I've done that? Then? So there's a couple of reduce it. Yeah, really easy ways to fix it. If, okay. if you actually have a, a lithium battery charger that has the BMS reset, and this is an example that works with your system. Right. right. All you do is put okay. that on there, it resets it, charges it, you're done. Would this be would it be wise to use something like this, say, overnight? Do you need to trickle charge yep. these or do anything? Absolutely. You can use that as a maintainer. And, and so and it will, um, I don't know the right term, but uh, manage the battery so that overnight, when you come out in the morning, everything is there the way it's you want. It's happy and ready to go again. All right. Correct. Good. Yes, but if you did not have this, the other way that you can reset one of these is you would put your charger on it, which you cannot use the desulfonating charger ever with a lithium battery, any lithium battery. Okay. So a regular charger is perfectly fine, but you would connect that to your terminal, then you either can put another battery in parallel, which will make it read voltage, I which see. will reset it. You could use a jump pack, so it read voltage. It takes about one second to do. <laughs> wow, okay, so that's pretty easy. In talking about the battery, as we did earlier, you were saying that uh, um, this is not the lithium ion that FAA and some other people are all worried about. Very uneventful. When one of these do get overcharged, they, they pop like a marshmallow. So they just physically expand they somewhat, just physically expand. but they're not going to burst into flame. Yeah. So how you pick a lithium battery is very different than how you pick a lead acid for your aircraft. It's, first thing you got to pick is your alternator size. So this one here is designed for a 60 amp alternator or smaller, the ETX 680. The ETX 900 is for an 80 amp alternator or smaller. And this ETX 1200 is designed for a 120 amp alternator or smaller. The second thing that you match up is your capacity, what you're comfortable with in the event your alternator fails to run your equipment. This model has 12.4 amp hours of capacity, which is extremely similar to the PC680, which is 12.3. If you were looking for an upgrade, we have an ETX 900 now. This is a 16 amp hour, and it has 900 cranking amps. And then we have this guy here. This one here has over a thousand cranking amps and 24.8 amp hours of capacity. What does that number mean to someone who says, wow, my, my alternator light came on and obviously went south on me. Right. What does that mean to them? So it is important for you as a pilot to know what do your instruments draw. So if your instruments draw 12 amps in an hour, you have one hour to land your plane. Okay. If they draw six amps, you have two hours. If they're drawing 24 amps, you have a half hour. And well, even you, so, that's enough time, you know, they all, everybody's got a nearest button on their right. electronic uh, instrument these days. There's an airport, usually within 30 minutes. We live in a country where there's a lot of airports. Uh, so 30 minutes of battery light left after the alternator completely goes away to run all those gizmos. Right. And you could sure, you could shut down certain instruments too. And so I would, to get my alternator fell. Yeah. I would. <laughs> okay, well that's pretty good stuff there. Um, People always have more questions, though, and if they're not here at AirVenture Oshkosh to come around and ask you, uh, where do we find you on the web, Kathy? So you can just go to EarthXMotorsports.com. Okay, sounds simple enough. We'll have more about the battery life and uh, the new batteries from EarthX on ByDanJohnson.com. We've got lots of affordable aviation there. So once again, affordable aviation of all kinds, ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for talking with Kathy and I here at AirVenture Oshkosh. Thank you.